is the loneliest house in the world. Located four miles off the coast of Iceland in an archipelago known as Westman Islands, there's tons of conspiracy theories around why this house was built. Some people believe it's a government doomsday bunker in case the world breaks into a nuclear war. And others think it's owned by a man who just wants to escape the world. I needed to find out. So I jumped on a plane and flew half the way across the world to Iceland. There she is. The loneliest house in the world. Who built that house? Why did they build it? Who lives in that island? Today, we're gonna do some investigative journalism and find out. Guys, there are more houses. See that one there? Look at that one. Yeah. There's another one. Why are people building these houses in the middle of nowhere? People told me it's a bunker to escape the apocalypse, but I'm not buying it. How do you even get up onto that house? That's the in-law house when they come to visit. That's another one right over there. Do you guys know who lives in those houses over there? So these are the puffin hunters' lodges. They have them on every house that they hunt on, and the two at the other side of the island as well. Was this true, or was this another conspiracy theory? I needed to find out. And after going through every article I could find on this place, here's what I found. The house on Elliday Island was built in the 1900s and is part of the Westman Islands Hunting Association, which uses the island to hunt for puffins during puffin season. There are a total of eight other hunting cabins in the surrounding islands, but Elliday was the first and remains the largest one. Unless you know the owners of the island, there is no way to get there. So I'm going to find myself one of these hunters and convince them to take me. All right, guys, we're in a bar. Let me see. Excuse me. Do you know one of the hunters over there who owns that house? Yeah, it's Ragnar. She then told me that Ragnar was a fisherman, a deep sea diver, and a renowned hunter. She said the guy is such a beast that the town made a beer in his name that is 10% alcohol proof. She then gave me his number, and after a quick call, Ragnar agreed to take me to the island. Ragnar! Yes! Ragnar Thor, nice to meet you. Wait, did he just say his second name was Thor? How much of a badass can this guy be? Where are we going, Ragnar? We're going to the loneliest house in the world, Atlede. All right, how are we getting there? By this boat, the Zodiac over here. All right, let's go. There's another house up here! I gotta hold on tight because if we fall into these waters, we can't die. Right, how long do we last if we fall in the water? One minute for you, <laughs> 60 minutes for me. <laughs> now we're about to jump onto the cliff. What? Yeah. Turns out LA Island is surrounded by cliffs, so there's no dock, and the only way up is climbing. The rule is don't hit the water. Easier for you that you do this often. <laughs> yo, yo. At this moment, everything went blank in my head, and all I could think about was not falling in the water. We're on, boys. From me, the stuff. Okay. Loneliest house in the world. They're leaving us? Yeah. I come back at Christmas. What? Yeah. I like the um. They're all speaking Icelandic. Can you speak English? Yes. We'll communicate then. Yes. Good. Okay. Ragnar's son Liam is a beast. This dude is just climbing the rocks like nothing. Training them young Ragnar. Yeah. The rule is always one hand on the rope. We got some steep cliffs and a bigger drop. Wow. Thank you, Ragnar. You're very welcome, my friend. Woo! <laughs> what way is the loneliest house in the world? Oh, that way. You know, there's more sheep in Iceland than people. How oh, many? Man. How many people are there? Uh, three hundred thousand or something. I don't know. How many sheep? Like four hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! It's happening! It's happening! This is the house. This is the house. This is a hunting lodge which was built by a hunting association by a lot of members in Westman Island. Come in. Uh, here we have the kitchen. This is my great, great, great grandfather. So it's something that's passed down from generation to generation. Yeah. This is the logo of the association. What's this say? Bjarg Veidemannafjallag Westmanaya. Cliff Hanging Association of Westman Island. So you're the cliff hanging yeah. hunters. Yeah. Is there electricity here? No, we have everything is gas powered. The fridge, the stove. You guys got all the essentials. Yeah, and pantry. A pantry. How long can you live with stuff in there? Mm. Couple of days, couple of weeks. We have running water. Where does the water come from? Collect rainwater from the gutters up here. We have the loneliest bathroom in the world. And here we have a picture. My dad, my sister, my great grandfather, grandfather, all the members of the association. You guys are a family? Yeah, a large family. Here we have a little living room. Okay. As you see, everything here carried up by hand. Insane! Yes. Who's this guy? 
<laughs> Betty looks like he's gonna murder me. I'm just gonna step back just in case. It's a big, big guy. Big guy. Is he part of the hunting association? Yeah. So how many people can sleep here? You can sleep up to 30 people, I would say here. 30 people? Yeah. How many people are in the association? About 30. And this is the first house. That's the first hunting cabin in Atlede before they moved it here. So that's the original loneliest house in the world. Yes. And then you guys built this one. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm gonna show you the tradition and what this is about. I'm so excited. We're gonna go puppet hunting with Ragnar. This is a tradition that's been going on in Westman Islands for centuries. And today Ragnar opened the door so we can get a sneak peek into what they do. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt this episode, but I gotta tell you that the sponsor of this video is Burmese. Burmese is actually my company and it helped pay for this video, which is extremely expensive to make. This hoodie is actually from Burmese. We got a bunch of cool clothing at burmese.com, so go check it out, buy some merch, and hopefully we'll be able to make more awesome videos like this. Love you guys, back to the episode. Now we're going to hunt the young birds, and what we do is we sit on the ledge and we hunt the puffin when he comes here and flies by the cliff. That's the bird that's not feeding the pufflings. That's the young bird. Hopefully we'll catch them. What's the rope for? In case everything breaks, okay. falls down. What's the drop here? <laughs> to your desk. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll hold on. We need the wind to get him to fly. There's no wind. Where do the birds go? They sit out on the sea. And just like that, Ragnar caught his first bird. <laughs> This is the most sportsman uh, hunting you can ever do. It's basically man versus nature. You have a stick and a net, and nothing else. It's not sportsmanship to shoot these birds. Check this out. What is it? It's fish. A bird must have dropped it. So this is what they're feeding their young with? Yes. They're pretty big as well, eh? What is uh, the food they feed them called? San chili. San chili. Yeah. It's got a little bit of chili on it. Nice. It's very important to be lying down. Because if I lose my track or balance, I'm going down there. And he's got a rope and I don't. Ragnar, what do you like the most about hunting? The tradition. Keep it alive. Know where your food comes from. Get your food yourself. And teach your kids. These puffins here, these are the ones that Ragnar caught. And they're putting them as bait. So that the other puffins go like, oh, what are you guys doing chilling over here? They get closer and then Ragnar goes and he catches them with a net. First time you're doing this? Yes. I came a lot here as a kid with my father and he came with his father and he came with his father and so it's been like all my family has done it. Peter went on to explain that hunting puffins can only be done for two weeks out of the whole year and that number is determined by bird scientists together with the town and the Westman Islands Hunting Association. It's important to point out that he only hunts the teenagers. That means they're not young and they're not the older ones that are reproducing and feeding the young. And most importantly, they only hunt what they consume. Look at him, he caught another one. Ask him if he wants to hunt puffins when he grows up. Yes? Yes. Like daddy? Yeah. Nice. All right, your turn. First time? Yes. My little cousin, the next generation. There's a cliff there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the plan, what did Ragnar say? That's the bird. That's what he said? The birds. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's all about patience. Did you used to come out here with your dad? Do the same? Yeah, and my grandfather. And my dad came with my grandfather, so it's been going generations. Wow. Now we need to teach this generation and make him grow up with it. We get new hunters. We get old, fat, and die. <laughs> it's a burrow. I'll show you guys how deep these things go. Can you see the puffin in the back? Look at it. That was cool, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, this is crazy. Just so awesome to see them keep a tradition that goes back for centuries alive. And not for fun, not for sport, but just to be able to consume what the land gives them. And out here, it's puffins. Gonna switch areas? Yeah. Oh, daddy. Over there. Look at all these puffins. There's thousands of them flying around. Good spot, because he's cornering them. They come so fast around the cliff and just, it's just reaction. Nice. How would that feel? Very good. The first one you catch each year, you have to kiss it and release it. Hey. Nice job! 
Did a good kiss? No. <laughs> There's millions of puffins flying around. Westman Islands is the place with the most amount of puffins in the world. And all these puffins, what they're doing is they're getting food out in the middle of the ocean and bringing them out to their young, which are in the burrows. In the next few days, those babies, which are called the pufflings, are gonna fly out to the sea and they're gonna stay there for two years until they become strong enough to come back on land. Here. So sit here, uh, like this, this hand at the end. Uh, exactly like this. And it's just patience is key, right? Yep. I have the tiger. Nope, that had food in it. Nice, control myself, Dean Machine. Yes. I have to kiss it now, no? Yeah. Like, right where do I go? Ass. His ass? Like from the top? Yeah. Or? From the top. Okay, now I have to kiss it. Zim. All right, bye, Puffin. <laughs> you are welcome. That was amazing. Wow. Got Chef Ragnar here. <laughs> He's filleting the pieces of the Puffin. Does that come out? Yeah. Wow. Usually preheat the grill. What do you do? Yeah, just a couple of minutes on each side salt and pepper. Look at the color. Oh, I'm gonna give you a taste. Puffin meat, first taste, let's go. Wow, it's juicy, rich flavor. Yeah. It's not like chicken at all. No. It's like, I would say like a mixture between beef and deer, but like not even, it's- Quite unique. It's unique, it, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for inviting me to your island, Ragnar. You're welcome. This has Very been welcome. an amazing experience. Yeah. Thank you, man. You're welcome. We're climbing to the top of the loneliest house in the world to see a sunset. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not gonna get tired of saying this, but I'm literally in heaven right now. This is one of the most beautiful places I have ever been to in my life. Wow. They've got a book with all the different types of stories and traditions, and they just read a story that there's a cave with a ghost story. So we're gonna go find the cave. All right. This is how all ghost stories go wrong, basically. A bunch of dudes in the middle of nowhere gonna go find some ghosts. The story goes that the woman gave birth to an unwanted child which she hid in a cave and after several years sailors could still hear the baby cry from inside the cave. We looked around for an hour or two but saw no sights of the cave or the baby. No luck with the ghosts but I'm exhausted and it's time to go to bed. Wow guys what what a day it's been. Seriously just in awe on where I am. I'm at the loneliest house in the world, but I'm puffin hunting with people who have had their families doing this for generations on end. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm so thankful for Ragnar for opening his doors and allowing me to share this with you guys. It's just like, what am I doing? But I'm exhausted, so good night guys. Nut Cheerios. Loneliest house in the world breakfast. Cool. Yeah! <laughs> Guys, I'm on camo mode. Whoa. Just look at how steep these cliffs are. <laughs> I am hunting on the cliffs. Steepest cliff in the world. House is over there. Look at the other guys hunting on the other end of the hill. I think this is a hole this if I fall. Ah, nice. And just when I thought everything was all right, a storm blew in and Ragnar called us to return to the house. There's a storm coming and we have to go, otherwise we're stuck for a few days. The seas out here can get very rough during storms, so I'm gonna get all my stuff. As you can see, it's already coming in, so we gotta go. Ragnar, yes. thank you so much for everything. You're welcome. I honestly, this has been a once in a lifetime opportunity. And it is. And it really is. <laughs> and it wouldn't have been possible without you. Yeah. So thank you. You're welcome. Guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you have any questions about the loneliest house in the world or about Ragnar, there's a link in the description. Thanks, guys.